Hi, and welcome back to Math Movies with Ms. Feuerbeck and Ms. Veludi. Today we will learn how to use clocks to add fractions. Here is the face of a clock. Oftentimes people use the face of a clock to help represent fraction. The reason why is that clocks have 12 hours on the face, and if we break it into 12 equal parts, what we say is that each of these parts represents one twelfth of the whole face. So we can do a lot of different work with fractions thinking about the way that it's broken into twelfths. Here are some depictions of the ways that clocks can be broken. So just as I mentioned before, we can break it into twelve equal parts and that would be one twelfth. We could also talk about the clock being broken into things like 5 twelfths, 7 twelfths, etc. If we move over here to the clock on the right, that clock has been broken into six equal pieces. So each of these segments is one sixth. You can also think about it that it goes to the two o'clock and that means that it's made up of two hours and each of these hour segments is one twelfth. So one sixth is really the same thing as two twelfths. We can also take a look at this clock in the middle. This clock has been broken into four equal pieces, or fourths, otherwise known as quarters. And if I shade in one of these segments, that is one fourth. So we could talk about the clock being broken down into fourths as well. Over here in the bottom left hand corner, we have another clock. This clock has been broken down into three equal pieces. As you can tell, each of the thirds, we're going to call this one-third, is the same thing as four-twelfths. Because it goes, it, it includes four hours of the twelve hours, and four-twelfths is the same thing as one-third. Lastly, if we take a look at the clock in the bottom right-hand corner, that clock has been broken into two equal sections. So I'm shading in one-half of the clock. We can discuss twelfths, sixths, fourths, thirds, and halves when discussing clocks. Alright, it's time to get started adding fractions using our clock face as our visual model. So here's an equation. One-sixth plus one-fourth plus one-third equals blank. We're going to use the clock face to do our best to solve this problem. So, I'm going to start by depicting the one-sixth on the clock. I remember that if I were to break this clock into six equal parts, that each of those parts would be the same thing as two twelfths. So I'm just going to write two twelfths below because they are equal. And I'm going to shade this segment, which is one-sixth of the entire clock, in purple. And I'm going to label it as one-sixth. Next we have one-fourth. I want to add one-fourth to my clock. Now I can't start at the 12, I need to start from the 2 where I've left off. And I know that if I were to break the whole clock into 4 equal pieces, it would be the same thing as 3 twelfths each. So I'm going to go ahead and go 1, 2, 3 more twelfths, and I'm going to shade this part in as one-fourth, otherwise known as three-twelfths. So if I were just trying to figure out what's one-sixth plus one-fourth, I would be at five-twelfths so far, but there's still more to come. So the next part is that I need to figure out what's one-third of the way more. So I know that if I were to break the clock into three equal pieces, or thirds, that one-third is the same thing as four-twelfths. So I'm going to just write that down to help me remember. And I'm going to go four more hours around the clock. So I'm at five, I'm going to go four more and end up at nine. I'm going to shade in one-third of the clock. All right. So now I have shown all three components, one-sixth, one-fourth, plus one-third. Where have I ended up? 
Well, I've ended up right here. I've started at the 12 and I've gone around this much of the way of the whole clock. I ended up at the 9. So I've gone around 9 twelfths of the way. The last thing that I need to do is figure out, is 9 twelfths the simplest form of that fraction? And actually, I know that it's not. 9 twelfths can be simplified. 9 twelfths can also be written as 3 fourths. And one way to think about that is to show that when I end up at the 9, if I were to have broken this clock into three, sorry, four equal pieces, I would have gone 1 fourth, 2 fourths, 3 fourths. And that's the same thing as ending up at 9 twelfths. So 9 twelfths is equal to 3 fourths, and 3 fourths is the simplest way of writing that fraction. Let's try another example together. 3 fourths plus 2 thirds equals something. Now, when I first look at this problem, I know right away that my answer is going to be greater than one whole. And that's because 3 fourths plus 2 thirds is going to bring me over one whole. The reason why I know that is because I know that the missing piece to get from 3 fourths to one whole would just be one fourth away. If I've gone all this way around to 3 fourths, I only have one fourth of the way to go. But I know that 2 thirds is a lot bigger than 1 fourth. So my answer is going to go all the way around the clock and beyond. And we're going to show that in this example, how that works. So 3 fourths. I'm going to break my clock into four equal parts. And I'm going to go around 1 fourth, 2 fourths, and 3 fourths of the way. I'm going to label that as 3 fourths of the way around. We can see that that's actually the same thing as 9 twelfths, so sometimes it's helpful to write that down as well. The next thing that I need to do is I need to go around two-thirds of the way more around my clock. Now I can remember back to before when I had broken my clock into three equal parts, and I know that each of my thirds is the same thing as four twelfths. So when I were to break it into four equal pieces, three equal pieces, each of my segments were four twelfths of the way around. So I know that if I were to shade in two thirds, I would be at eight twelfths. This time we're starting at the nine, and so I need to take my fraction and add it from where I left off. So I need to go around eight more twelfths. So, if I'm to go all the way to the 12 here, that would be 3 more twelfths, and I need to go 5 more to get to 8 twelfths of the way. So I'm at 12, I need to go to 5. I'm going to shade in all of this. And everything that I've just shaded here in red, that's 2 thirds of the clock, otherwise known as 8 twelfths. So, we have added our two pieces, the place that we ended up is right here, but we have to remember we didn't just go 5 twelfths of the way around the clock. In fact, we went 12 twelfths, or 1, and another 5 twelfths. So that's the same thing as one whole rotation, one whole, and 5 twelfths. I have to think to myself, can I simplify my answer? Can 5 twelfths be simplified? And in this case, no, it cannot, because 5 is not a factor of 12. So my answer is 1 and 5 twelfths. Those were two examples of ways that you can use the clock as a visual model to help add fractions.